English here. Let's dive into our typical analysis consisting of a deep dive of our kit, advancements, matrices, team comps and rotations, and then finally compare the new team comps with the old ones. Fenrir's basic attacks have a 50% chance to generate a Nolt on target's hit, stacking up to 5, with a 1 second cooldown between applying Nolts. Certain parts of Fenrir's basic attack chain have a 100% chance to add a Nolt. These Nolt additions are exempt from the 1 second ICD, making certain combos much better at Nolt generation. Dodging also adds a single Nolt. Nolts don't do anything by themselves. But dodge attacks, as well as the area hold attack, will detonate notes, dealing damage per note detonated. If three or more notes are detonated, the damage per note is doubled, and the dot effect is applied, dealing damage proportional to your max health per tick. There's also a bug where if this dot ticks at the same time you hit 100% note generation hit, you get an extra note. All the damage related to notes counts as dodge damage, meaning that Tianlan stacks will get consumed by the dot without having to think about it. It also means that Puma Matrix procs on each dot tick, which is funny, but unfortunately doesn't make Puma Matrix viable. Since Fenrir has a lot of combo variations, let's take a look at how all of them perform. The most noteworthy basic combo is their falling attack to Roar. When cancelled quickly, it does the highest DPS in our kit, while providing a guaranteed 2 notes, meaning you could alternate it with dodges to always get a 3 plus note detonation. As soon as the Roar animation starts, you'll gain a short invulnerability buff, which will cover roughly one third of your rotation in an iframe when doing this combo alternated with dodges. As this is an aerial combo, make sure to only use it when in close range of an enemy or else the red craft pool of doom will come to reduce your DPS. Fenrir's skill summons the consciousness of your target for 15 seconds and creates a song world for 30 seconds. Within the song world, you gain damage reduction and take further reduced damage from your target. When attacking the consciousness, you heal one hit for a portion of your attack stat. And within the song world, you ignore a portion of your target's resistance. I did further testing with resistance and updated values. Certain pieces of content have more resist than previously thought, meaning resist shred has a lot more value. The consciousness takes 100% of the direct damage that Fenrir does to it. This includes the raw damage from Fenrir's attacks, but not the damage from no detonation. When this consciousness expires, it deals AoE damage within the Zon world. Her trait increases damage by 18% when using two different element weapons, or 23% when using three. This is a very consistent trait that allows for rainbow comps, as it gives rainbow comps an extra leg up on Zamir's trait. That's pretty much it for Fenrir's base kit. However, a lot of her power, and even an entire skill, is locked behind advancements, so let's take a look at them. We'll look at the strength of advancements with two compositions. A standard vote comp with Lin and Tian Lan, and a rainbow comp with Lin and Saki. Fenrir's A1 grants an additional skill inside Song World, Oral Fever. This is a highly damaging skill that also heals on hit, 
placing two notes on the target with the final hit. This sub skill has a 15 second corner. However, when you detonate three or more notes, the cooldown of Oral Fever is reset. Because it generates two notes by itself, you can always open Zon World with Oral Fever to dodge attack, which applies one more note, to Oral Fever again. Due to how many skill casts you get with this, it has huge value in the Rainbow Comp versus the Standard Volt Comp, but it's very strong either way. Her A3 inflicts damage to all targets within the Zon World every time Oral Fever is cast, or for every 45% max HP loss. This bonus damage does not work against the Consciousness. For every 99% max HP lost, you gain a buff that prevents death for 45 seconds, which also grants a short immunity to damage. This gives her good synergy with Tian Lan for survival, though the damage gain is rather minimal in both comps. Her A5 doubles the damage from note detonation and the dot effect and triggers the A3 damage if it hasn't been triggered for 12 seconds. This advancement is worth relatively more in the standard comp, as the rainbow comp doesn't focus on note detonation as much as skill spam. Finally, her A6 increases crit rate by a flat amount when using her weapon. This crit rate lingers for 5 seconds after swapping off, allowing you to benefit other weapons with it while quick swapping. In summary, her A1 is her most important advancement, with the other advancements each giving a little chunk of damage, making her fairly FTC friendly. Let's now look at her matrices. Fenrir's two-piece matrix set is probably the most simple one we've seen in a while. It increases crit damage, working in the offhand. Her 4 piece matrix set increases final damage for 10 seconds when dealing both damage, stacking a variable amount of times based on the advancement, and also works off field. While Fenrir's matrices aren't particularly weak, they are in an awkward spot. For one, Fenrir is the star of the shelf and is almost always on field, so she can benefit a lot from on field matrices. In fact, severe chrome matrices on her with a base of 60% crit rate almost matches the power of her own matrices at both 0 and 3 star. And by extension, Lyra's severe matrices are an even stronger choice. In terms of off-field matrices, Fender competes with both Tian and Lin's matrices. Lin's matrix grants a large amount of attack and damage, and Tian's while weaker in terms of buffs, has a very interesting interaction. Normally, Tian's two-piece on a single target will just hit the enemy once every time it procs. However, with Fenrir, the chain lightning bounces between the clone and the enemy. While the bounces to the clone do not do damage, it strikes the main body three to four times per proc, massively inflating the value of the two-piece. Fenrir's Matrix cannot compete with Lin and Tian for the off-field slot, but for an on-field option, the power of her Matrix is just on par. Because you can match the power of her matrices with a very accessible option, it's recommended to skip these. A standard vote comp will consist of Lin, Tian Man, and Fenrir. However, these slots are not all set in stone. Lin or Tianlan can be replaced with Nemesis for lower damage and higher survivability, or even something like Crow for an alternate discharge and burst damage buff. The rotation plays fairly similarly, so feel free to slot in whatever you have, as well as use the calculator to estimate the power of your team. Let's start out with the vote comp rotation. Open up with Lin's Fjord, followed by Tianlan's skill. Use Fenrir's skill, immediately followed by her A1. Dodge twice to prevent overcapping of Tianlan's stacks, and then use her A1 again. 
start doing her standard note generation combo until the clone expires. Then discharge the Tian, drop a new limb field if you have one, and then you do A1 to dodge the A1. There is no downtime between Zon worlds, so before it ends, you want to swap off and use all your other skills again before you repeat the rotation. What about in the Rainbow Comp? I would explain this one more in depth, but the TODR is just... Push all the buttons. Except when you have two Lin fields. Then you skip Saki, then reset with Lin plus Lin and Fender A1A1. It's a very high tempo comp that never stays on one character for like more than 5 seconds. So it's recommended to have a good internet connection due to lag between resets being very hindering to damage output. How strong are these comps compared to each other and other teams? We'll analyze it in the next section. Disclaimer! Theory crafting, grain of salt, yada yada. I'm too lazy to read this lot. At maximum investment, both teams match the damage of Umi teams with Grievous included, with the Rainbow Comp Umi close behind. Note that both physical and vote teams have resistance reduction, vote having 15% and physical having 10. So against certain content, these will gain roughly 6-12% damage. In Dolphin teams with A6 units and 3 star standard matrices, the Rainbow Comp performs better than the standard vote team, though all the comps are fairly close to each other overall. In FTP teams with A1 units and 0 star standard matrices, the Rainbow Team beats out all the other options by a long shot, with the standard vote team trailing behind by a bit but still is a massive improvement over the old vote teams. I'm sure there's someone out there who is wondering, what Fenrir advancement do I need to beat out my A6 Kroll or Samir? This can vary depending on a bunch of factors. If you're considering Kroll or Samir, it's assumed you don't have Tian Lan, in which case, A1 Fenrir beats out A6 Kroll or Samir in situations with resistance in play. And without resistance, a 3-5 Fenrir roughly matches Crawl, and A1 roughly matches Samir with 4p Samir and 0 star. So this will change depending on your Samir matrix stars. When in doubt, use the calculator and plug in your values. Fenrir is a strong character that raises the damage for both comps by a sizable margin, while also introducing a very competitive rainbow team, especially so at lower investment levels. Her matrix is a bit weird, but that just means she's even more FTP friendly and you can just use generic DPS matrices on her instead. She's really quite the shining star.